I think I saw a demon in real life. This is something that is really difficult to talk about for many reasons. First of all, it makes me sound a little crazy, and I'm sure it's not something a lot of people can really say. Second of all, I'm really self-conscious about talking about this, because I don't want it to sound like I'm poor shaming or anything. Let me get that out of the way first. I have been poor before, and so has my family. I just wanted to make sure this post comes across seriously, instead of sounding like I was traumatized by a poor-looking weird person. So to set the stage, I was on a trip in California, and we were going along the Pacific Highway. We had left the Redwood Forest and were en route to San Francisco, and when we stopped we were in the middle of absolute nowhere. We stopped because we saw that there was a restaurant, a jack-in-the-box right off the highway, and we were all hungry and it was getting dark. There was a gas station, the jack-in-the-box, and then a shitty tiny little motel, and then nothing but trees and country roads for miles. We pulled into the parking lot, got out and went inside and we were basically the only ones in there aside from two employees. There was a small family, but they were leaving. We ordered and sat, and as we were sitting, we heard the door open. I looked, and what met my eyes still haunts me. There was a woman standing there, with long, unkempt hair. She was probably about 5'4", and skinny as can be. She was white, but her skin didn't look right. It looked like it didn't fit her, and it looked like it was either muddy or rotten in some places. She was wearing a dirty gray tank top and sweatpants that didn't fit her, as if she had taken them from someone else. They were hanging so low that they exposed part of her privates. I quickly turned my head away and shot a glare at my mom and sister that was meant to tell them not to look, and that something didn't feel right here. I've gotten vibes since I was a young child. They've been right probably about 95% of the time. So much so that when I have a vibe about something or someone, my family almost always treats it as fact. And when that woman, though I'm not sure if that's exactly what I should call her, was behind me, I felt pain in my body and fear consumed me. And not the kind of fear that I would describe as fight or flight. I would say more of the kind of fear I imagine a sinner would have on their deathbed. I honestly felt as though at any moment the pits of hell could have opened up and she would grab me and throw me in. I felt nothing but a sinister, pure, evil presence emanating from where she was. I feel completely certain that she was either a demon or a person possessed by a demon. I couldn't help but look back every now and then. Her behavior was erratic. She would leave for a couple minutes, then come back, then leave again. Wash, rinse, repeat. She never even ordered anything. She would just stand there like she wasn't sure of what she was doing. And when she walked, her legs moved in a way that seemed almost as if she didn't know how to use them. Every time she left, my soul would sigh with relief. And every time she came back, it was as if the dread multiplied. I thank God every day that I didn't meet her eyes, though sometimes I wonder what I would have seen if I had. Hell, perhaps? The face of the devil? I guess I'll never know, and I don't think I want to. Anyway, she eventually left for good, not long before we left ourselves. I was shell-shocked. It was without a doubt one of the most traumatizing experiences of my life. I checked under the car when we left just in case she was there, clinging on. I honestly felt like that was a true possibility. My mom wanted to talk about it right away, because she was as freaked out as I was. My sister also wanted to talk about it, because she didn't understand why my mom and I were being so frantic and anxious. I told them both to shut up, rather sharply, because I was allowing my pent-up fear and anxiety to boil over a little bit just so that I didn't explode from the pressure building inside. I can't explain why I reacted so angrily. I just had this innate feeling inside of me that speaking of something evil while still so close to it would somehow summon it or allow it to follow us. Once we were about 30 minutes down the road, I felt a lot safer about talking about everything. 
I told my mom and sister everything that I had been feeling. I started shaking and crying as I told them. My sister was completely oblivious while we had been there, but my mom was freaked out by her too. She mostly just was scared, because she could tell how terrified I was, but didn't entirely know why. I wish it ended there, but unfortunately the most terrifying part, for me at least, hadn't happened yet. We arrived at our hotel in San Francisco at about 11.30pm. We checked in without any issue, and settled down for the night. I fell asleep rather quickly, because I felt like the life had literally been drained from my body, and I just could not stay awake a second longer. I awoke at 4am. There was complete silence in the room. This was odd, given that my mother snores louder than a blender every night, so I was instantly on high alert. I felt like I needed to get up and look around, but I couldn't. My limbs felt glued in place. Then, out of the corner of my eyes, in the far reaches of the shadows in the dark hotel room, I could see movement. Then she walked out of the shadows toward me. She had red eyes and horns protruding from her skull, but she was the same woman I had seen in Jack in the Box. She walked over to the foot of my bed and looked at me. I did everything I could to not stare into her eyes. They were boring into my soul. I closed my eyes and prayed to God for mercy, and when I opened them, she was gone, and I regained all movement, as if a spell had been lifted. I pulled the covers up, I piled pillows on top of my head, and quivered and sobbed before finally passing out. In the morning, I told no one of what had happened. I kept it entirely to myself until we got to the next part of our vacation in Wyoming. I felt like I was right, that being too close and speaking of her might summon her again. I get nauseous any time I think about Jack in the Box, and not just because their food is awful. And I never wish to drive along that coastal highway again, the highway that brought me face to face with evil. I feel like I need to cleanse my soul after telling this story. A strange occurrence at my friend's house back in 2010. It was summer 2010, and I was spending a few days at my friend's house before he went off to college. His house was large, with a finished basement that had a huge TV, and a big couch that we'd often sleep on when I stayed over. He had a dog, Mace, who would follow him wherever he went in the house. On this particular day, it was probably around noon or early afternoon. The sun was bright, and it was beautiful outside. We had decided we wanted to go for a walk in the field behind his place, but first I wanted to wash up some of the breakfast dishes. The layout of the first floor was such that you could come up out of the basement into the dining room, which was attached to the kitchen, turn right, and then immediately turn right again and head down a hallway that would take you either forward to the front entrance, left to the living room, or right to the stairs that would lead to the second floor. So Carlin says he's going to run down to the basement because he thinks he left his phone down there the night before and it's probably stuck in the couch cushions. I say okay and see him head down the stairs with Mace following him. I'm just standing in the kitchen at the sink, washing some plates, when after a couple minutes I hear Carlin come up the steps and see him and Mace out of the corner of my eye turn and go down the hallway that leads to the front entrance. I ask him if he found his phone, and he doesn't answer, so I head to the hallway and ask again, thinking maybe he didn't hear me. When I get to the hallway, I see him and Mace turn left and disappear into the living room, and again he doesn't answer me, or even acknowledge I said anything. I was a little puzzled, but I just kind of laughed and told him to stop being a chode and ignoring me, when from behind me, I hear Carlin say, Who are you talking to? I turn around, and him and Mace are standing at the end of the hallway by the kitchen. They had just come up the stairs from the basement. I was completely confused by this. 
I had just been following the both of them to the living room. How did they get behind me? I said this, and Carlin looked at me like I was joking or trying to prank him, when I was the one who felt like I was being pranked. It was just so weird. I clearly remember seeing him at the other end of the hallway, wearing his blue and gray beanie, and it disappearing around the corner, and the back end of Mace tail wagging following suit. Yet he wasn't there at all, because at that moment, the real Carlin and Mace had just reached the top of the steps and were wondering who the hell I was calling a chode. At the time, I wasn't scared or creeped out by it. I was mostly just confused. But now, when I think of it, it makes my skin crawl a little. What did I see? There was no one else in his home that day. Over the years, he and I have lost contact. He turned into a person that I didn't really want to be friends with anymore. But I do miss the old Carlin very, very much. And that's the story. Not all that scary, but it still puzzles me to this day. I get the Witch in the Woods When I was about ten-ish, I lived in a really small town. My friends and I would often play on the trails near the forest after school or on the weekends building forts, fishing, etc. One day, we were walking a trail, and a lady in her mid-fifties or sixties came out of the woods. She had dirt all over her hands and pants. She said her car broke down, and she needed help. We said we would go tell our parents to come help, but she insisted we come into the woods. We said no and kept walking, and she just stared at us. It was like she just shut off as a person when we told her. The smile went away. Everything. Even when we were a kilometer down the road, we could still see her staring at us. Anyway, we get back to my friends, and we're playing tag or something in his backyard. One of us starts making fun of the lady we saw earlier, and out of nowhere, he is launched into his parents' shed. He broke the window and his arm. We all stand in shock. His parents come out and start yelling at us, blaming us and saying we threw him. All of us ended up being grounded. To this day, we all have a dream about seeing the woman in the woods every now and then. Every time I dream it, she is closer and closer to us. Anybody have some similar experiences or advice for the dreams? What convinced me that the Ouija board is real? I've been reading through this Reddit for the last few days, and it's inspired me to talk about an experience I had when I was 12. My mom was taking things out of her closet to donate to Goodwill for a tax write-off. She called me down to ask if I wanted any of the shoes she was getting rid of. I started rummaging around her closet and found an old Hasbro Ouija board. I vaguely knew what it was, but had never played with one, and asked her if she would play it with me. She agreed, and said when she was finished we would. So later that evening she explained in more detail how it worked. We set it up and began. I went into this thinking it was a big joke. The first thing the board spelled was my mother's name. I was giggly and said to my mom, You're moving it. And she, of course, replied that she was not. She asked the board, who is this? And they replied with the name of my mom's boyfriend. Let's call him Ronnie. Before she married my stepdad, we will call him Mark. Ronnie died in a motorcycle accident when I was four, and I hardly remember him. She asked Ronnie if he could prove it was him, and he said a few things that only Ronnie could know. I still thought my mom was moving it, because she, of course, would also have this knowledge. Then Ronnie said he had to warn her about Mark. He basically said Mark was a bad man and would do something to hurt me and go to prison. He said Mark needed to leave right away. We were both taken aback by this, 
because Mark had always been an amazing father and husband to my mom. My mom asked what he was going to do to hurt me, and the board just kept saying things like, He's a bad man. He's a dirty man. He will go to prison. He will be punished. Nothing too specific. My mom got annoyed and said that the real Ronnie would never say these things. That he'd be happy that her and her family have a good life now. She ended the session, and we didn't play it again after that night. I was left confused, but just kinda blew it off. Three months later, I was getting ready for school, about to jump in the shower, and I saw something shine out of the corner of my eye. Upon close inspection, I realized it was a small camera. Long story short, my stepdad had put these cameras around the house and had been recording me taking a shower, changing clothes and sleeping. I slept in the nude at the time with my door locked. We found out that he had been doing this for almost six months. He was exchanging them with people online for other videos. He was arrested and spent a good while in prison. Never. Never would I have seen it coming. It was completely out of what we thought was his character, and we were absolutely destroyed as a family. A few weeks after he went away, I was in my mom's room, and she said, Ronnie was right. It freaked me out so much, I can't explain it. No one, I mean no one, had any idea. He was very, very sneaky, but Ronnie knew. girl in the window. So this story can be pretty easily explained away as like a fever dream or something, but it still freaks people out whenever I tell them about it, so I figured I would share. I'm 23 now, but I was 17 when the story took place. My grandfather was very clearly nearing the end of his days, so we wanted to be with him before he passed away so my family visited him in Tennessee for Thanksgiving. On the day we were leaving, I woke up feeling sick. My family lives fairly close to Los Angeles, so it was a long plane ride, and by the time we landed, I was feeling pretty awful. Being in an environment 30 degrees colder than what I'm used to didn't help either. On our first night there, we stayed at the house of my mom's old college friend, it was an old house that she had just bought and moved into. She was telling my mom about how old it was and why she ended up buying it and whatnot during the car ride, but I was feeling so groggy that I wasn't absorbing any of it. When we finally got there, I could see what she meant by old. It looked like a Victorian era house and had the extremely narrow hallways that those old houses tend to have. When we went inside, I felt a really oppressive energy immediately surround me. I have anxiety, and being in new, unfamiliar places will often trigger it, so I assumed that's all it was, and didn't really pay much attention to it. Instead, I just decided to go to bed, despite it only being around 8. I just felt terrible, and wanted the day to be over. I slept on the couch in the living room. Initially. I had a lot of trouble getting to sleep. My head was killing me, and I felt like my entire body was being weighed down, which I attributed to being sick and exhausted. I managed to fade in and out of sleep throughout the night. Later though, sometime around 5am, I woke up to see someone else there. At the foot of the couch, there was a large semicircle shaped window that perfectly framed a street lamp outside. Standing under the street lamp was a girl with long brown hair, and she looked terribly ill. She had dark circles under her eyes, and looked pale as a sheet. She was barefoot, and was wearing an old-looking white nightgown. Not old as in old and worn, but old as in antique, if that makes sense. She was just standing out there, staring at me through the window, and mouthing something to me over and over again. It was windy, and leaves were blowing around, 
but her hair and gown didn't move at all in the breeze. In addition to that, it must have been horrendously cold outside, but she didn't seem to be reacting at all. She just kept mouthing the word to me. Of course, I couldn't hear her, and in my sleepy, sick stupor, I said, What? I can't understand you. A voice then responded to me, although it's hard for me to describe where it came from. It felt like it was coming from the left side of my head, but behind me at the same time, although it didn't feel like it was coming from anyone in the room with me, but rather like it was coming from inside my brain. The voice said, She's saying gossamer. It's good for fevers. She's trying to help you. I got really scared at this and I asked, Why? She doesn't know me. Why is she out there? Why does she want to help me? Then suddenly, as if in the blink of an eye, I could feel the dark figure of the girl who was just outside a second ago, standing next to the couch, leering over me. The light in the room was coming from behind her, so she looked like a dark shadow person. Leaning over me, she whispered, It's okay. You're going to be alright. I immediately woke up at that, and I felt absolutely terrible. I was extremely disorientated as well, because I remembered waking up and seeing the girl outside the window. I couldn't figure out why I had just woken up again. I tried to get up and tell my mom that I needed help, but as soon as I got up, I had a hard time walking. Once I got to the door of the bedroom my parents were in, I collapsed to the floor and pawed at the door calling for my mom. When she came out and found me on the floor, she took me into the bathroom and sat me down. Everything was starting to get very hazy, and when my mom was trying to get ibuprofen or something, I apparently passed out. The girl was with me again, only this time she was behind me, pulling me down into the deep, deep ocean. My first instinct told me that she was trying to drag me down to hell. My mom later told me that I was having a seizure at this point. When I came to, I remember telling my mom that I felt really, really bad. She tried to help me up and back over to the couch, but on the way over, I blacked out again and had another seizure on the floor. I vaguely remember hearing my mom yelling to my dad for help, but it's hard to piece it together. I had never had a seizure before in my life, so it's not like this was a common thing for me either. The entire time, I felt like the girl from earlier was trying really hard to take me with her, like she wanted me to succumb to illness. When I finally got back to the couch with the help of my dad, my fever immediately broke. I started sweating like crazy, and suddenly felt loose and relaxed, as if I was at ease after the whole ordeal. I no longer felt like the girl was there with me, and honestly I was so exhausted that I wasn't even thinking about it. My mom stayed with me until I fell back asleep, and I was fine the next morning. I was still a bit sick the rest of the time, but nothing compared to that first night. Logic tells me that it was probably a fever dream, but the fact that I immediately felt something wrong when I stepped foot in that house, and that I had two seizures after the encounter with that girl, leads me to believe that it was something else. I'm not sure that it was a ghost, because, to be honest, it felt more like she was an angel that could tell I was sick, and was trying to take me to hell with her. I don't think she was trying to help me, like the voice in my head claimed she was. I think she was trying to kill me. I've never felt closer to death in my life. I've never told my parents about this experience for fear of ridicule, and I figure that I'll never be back in that house anyway, since my mom's friend has since relocated once again, so there isn't much of a point. I just hope that I never encounter whatever that girl was again. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. Links to all my shit are in the description. Discord, social media, Patreon, shirts, merch, my other channel. 
Let me know how you felt about the black screen, if you even noticed it. Was it better for you to fall asleep? Alright, I got a bunch of audio of my stomach going crazy. We're going to listen to that. I got some other stuff coming soon. I was slacking for a couple weeks because I go up and down with this this whole thing. I'm like interested and then I'm not. So anyway, I love you guys. And that's about it. So be good to animals, even people. See ya. And she just stared at me. What's with... Do you guys hear my stomach? Holy shit. Well, fucking A. <laughs> Sounds like a frog is... <laughs> was poisoned or something. A frog's dying. Yo, it's my mark. Barks was crash. <laughs>